EPA and WA Meteorologist Bobby Martinshire with your outlook for the weekend, August 22nd and 23rd, 2020. For your Saturday, the weather map doesn't look too bad here. It looks like we have a few showers that are possible south of the Mason-Dixon line. But the rest of us are going to be high and dry today, but we will have a little bit more in the way of cloud cover today. Still a southwesterly flow at the surface, though, so we're going to get temperatures uh, increasing from what we saw yesterday. So this is the flow out of the southwest today. Uh, the upper level disturbance that is going to be responsible for showers south of the Mason-Dixon line will be centered over the Tennessee Valley today. And uh, we'll be in the middle of an upper level trough that is off to our north, which is sitting right about here. And uh, then we have this upper level upper level low feature that's sitting right about here. So uh, in between here is where we are. We're going to have this uh, kind of a, a partly to mostly cloudy day. So we're going to have uh, have more clouds than we saw over the last couple of days. But it's still going to be warmer because of that southwesterly flow off. So here is a look at this morning. Uh, plenty of clouds this morning. We're going to start off mostly cloudy. As we move throughout the day here, though, you have some some breaks, especially for our northern areas here. Southern areas might not get as lucky today with those breaks, but uh, further north, you're kind of like a teeter between a, we'll call it variably cloudy, because you have partly to mostly cloudy skies up here in these regions here at this point by the time we get to late morning. And then you're going to have more episodes where we have some clouds moving in later in the day. But you see some places here, look at, I know it's hard to see here on the video here, but if you look at the percentages of cloud cover. That's what these numbers indicate. Uh, you got a 52 in Allentown, so that's pretty much, you know, partly mostly cloudy. And then further south, you got a lot of 70s, 80s, some 90s. Uh, that's the percentage of cloud cover in the sky. So this is all mostly cloudy further south. So we're going to have uh, those chances for more clouds today. But again, no precipitation today. We're going to have an opportunity for that on Sunday, uh, Monday, and Tuesday. These will be scattered thunderstorms later in the day. But uh, I'll show you in a second here as we get to the NAM. It's not really too thrilled with Sunday at the very least. It doesn't run into range into full range and uh, through Tuesday just yet. But at least for Sunday, where the models are indicating some isolated and widely scattered thunderstorms here on Sunday afternoon, the NAM does not. Now here is looking at, five, at uh, 4 p.m. on Sunday. Moving this forward here, you have a few isolated cells here that could produce thunderstorms. They're going to be relatively uh, slow moving, but there's really not too much here. This goes right through the evening hours. And now I'm looking at midnight here. So this is... Where this uh, is approaching Harrisburg here, uh, this is 8 p.m. So there's really not too much going on here on Sunday on the, the uh, three-kilometer NAM. Whether that's correct or not, we'll see as, as time progresses. Of course, we'll send any alerts needed for uh, lightning if we do have any of that occurring. There is the opportunity for some uh, pulsing type storms uh, in, the, in the Sunday through Tuesday time frame. Each afternoon and early evening, generally a two to eight window every single day. Uh, where you have the opportunity for that convection to pop up. Now, the reason for that, for this convection popping up, and as we move ahead as Monday, you can see that a little bit better here. Uh, Monday is showing some more scattered activity, and you get to Tuesday, uh, pretty much the same thing, scattered activity moving through. These are uh, upper-level disturbances that are moving uh, on the uh, along the northern stream. So we get to uh, the 500 millibar chart, or the, as we get into early next week, you're going to have a pretty big elongated ridge here that's setting up over the southern and western U.S., okay? Above that, though, there is a northwest flow aloft that's coming into our area. So these disturbances, you put a little L's here, uh, are one after another, very fast moving uh, through our area. And that's why we have the opportunity for some uh, isolated to scattered convection, both uh, or actually Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, because of that northwest flow developing aloft. So uh, another thing to mention about this is you have some uh, wildfires out here in California uh, some of that sp uh, smoke from that is going to be spreading up and over that ridge, and guess what? Right down in our area. So we'll have some haze to deal with as we get into early next week, one that normally wouldn't be the case, but it is because of that uh, the wildfires going into uh, in California and ongoing, and at the same time, the ridge placement here is conducive for and up and over the top of the ridge uh, jet stream. So. Jetstream is going to allow that uh, some of that smoke to get into our area. So for those of you that have breathing conditions, or uh, you know, unhealthy for safe uh, for unsafe groups, or <laughs> I'm not saying that correctly, but you know, you, you get the idea. Uh, un unhealthy uh, air to breathe for uh, those that are susceptible to any breathing conditions will be in place for early next week as long as those wildfires are, are going to continue out here in california so that's going to go up over top of the ridge we have two things to deal with that so we have those fast moving disturbances 
We also have the smoke to deal with early next week. Uh, but once we get past this, and once we get into uh, next week, once we get into Wednesday, Thursday, I do think we quiet down a little bit. Uh, we should be partly cloudy here on Wednesday, and then Thursday looks like a mostly sunny day. Uh, we're going to watch for the remnants of this is uh, this is Laura here. And we're going to watch what the remnants of this does. If it does meet up with this trough that's coming in here for later Friday, some scattered showers and thunderstorms are expected at the end of the week as this frontal boundary moves through. But it may absorb what's left of Laura at this point as is well inland. This is not going to be anything like we just had with uh, the previous two tropical storms, Faye and Esaias. This will not be anything like that because it's going to spend plenty of time over land, whether it makes landfall down here or what have you. It's going to eventually turn to the east here, and uh, it'll spend a lot of time over land before it gets to this point. So this will be a weakened low at this point, but may, may be absorbed by this incoming trough here, and uh, that's expected later on Friday or Friday night. And once that moves through, it sets up a cooler temperature regime for the next weekend. So we're going to have very warm temperatures this week for most of the week, temperatures above average. Straight through at least Tuesday, we might have a break here on Wednesday with a northwest flow, but then we'll have uh, temperatures warm again by Thursday, and then Friday the front comes through and changes things on the back side of that for the better as far as lower humidity and lower temperatures. I'm EPA WA meteorologist Bobby Marcher, so that is the outlook for this weekend, August 22nd and 23rd, 2020. Have a great Saturday and Sunday.